Okay, let's practice the concept of linear dependence and its effect on decomposition. So we'll start with geometric vectors, as always, and the point, the objective of these exercises is to decompose the vector d as a linear combination of a, b, and c in all possible ways. Now when you approach these exercises, you must of course first determine whether the vectors a, b, and c are linearly dependent because that has huge implications on decomposition. So let's see, in this case, the vectors a, b, and c are linearly dependent. Can you see why? It's because b is twice a. Okay, so they're linearly dependent. That immediately implies that there will be infinitely many ways to decompose d. So now let's, let's convert this form of linear dependence to the non-trivial linear combination that equals zero because that's the key to decomposition because it is by adding that linear combination to a decomposition of D that we'll be obtaining equivalent linear combinations that also yield D. So that linear combination is, we can write it in several different ways, infinitely many different ways in fact, but let's write it as 2A minus b, oops, equals zero. Okay, so this is our fancy zero. We can add as much of it as we'd like to any linear combination, and it will change the coefficients of that linear combination without changing its value. Okay, so now let's go for d. So I'll, I arrange d in a very special way to make it c minus b and help you practice subtracting vectors once again. So d equals c minus b. Well, that's just a particular way of doing it. And of course, we can add any proportion to the, of the fancy zero without altering the value of the linear combination. So this part is all about d. This part is all about the relationship among A, B, and C. Okay, so this actually answers the question. But when someone asks for a linear combination, you might want to do the answer in a form that gives the clear A coefficient, the clear B coefficient, and the clear C coefficient. So let's convert it to that form. It equals 2 alpha B, excuse me, 2 alpha A, minus 1 plus alpha b minus 1 from here plus alpha from here b plus c. And here you go. We have a wonderful expression that captures all possible ways of decomposing the vector d as linear combinations of a, b, and c. So this problem was done and the key was realizing that the set of vectors is linearly dependent. We went to the non-trivial linear combination that equals zero, which gave us all possible linear combinations of vectors a, b, and c that deliver d. Okay, this exercise is done. Let's move on to the second one. We have two vectors, a and b, and the third one, c, that's the zero vector. And we need to decompose d. Let's once again decide whether a, b, and c are linearly independent. Take a moment to think about it. And the answer is, yes, they are linearly dependent. You can see it in one of two ways. So once we have the zero vector, it can always be easily expressed as a linear combination of the remaining vectors by putting zeros in front of the coefficients. Remember, when we're expressing one vector is a linear combination of the rest, there is no requirement that that linear combination is non-trivial. So as soon as we have a zero vector in the mix, the set of vectors is linearly dependent. Something good we learned from here. Now let's convert this to a non-trivial linear combination that equals zero. <clears throat> and of course, you can write it in several different ways, but one that's deceptively simple is to just write C equals zero. 
I could have, we could have thrown in 0a plus 0b plus c equals 0, but there is no point. So here we have a non-trivial linear combination that equals 0. Why is it non-trivial? Because this coefficient right here is 1, so it's not 0. Okay, now the rest is easy. d equals twice a. That's a particular way of doing it. And then you can add any proportion of, the, of this fancy zero. Not so fancy, but still substantial. Plus alpha C. There you go. So I would call it a deceptively simple looking answer to a problem that actually requires a little bit of thought when you encounter it for the first time. But the point is that you have to get used to the fact that having a zero vector in the mix immediately implies linear dependence. Okay, and this answers the question by giving us all possible linear combinations of A, B, and C. And you see how B is not in the mix at all, because it can't be, for obvious geometric reasons. That gives D. Okay, now we'll erase the board and we'll do a couple more geometric examples.